So I think this you see here is a little bit more typical development. Uh, you see the flames that are climbing. The temperature again is about 300 degrees in there now. Um, we'll see if it will continue to progress. Usually it will spread to the nearby combustibles. It will heat up those combustibles to the point where they start igniting. Down. You'll see the room is starting to darken down. If you were in a room like this and you were standing up and you took one breath of that air, it would pretty much make you unconscious immediately. Um, and again, that's why the firefighters crawl. We reset the clock for when that kind of started flaming again. So you can see that we're just about a minute into this. The temperatures now are 570 degrees. The smoke detector would have activated in that room now. You just can't hear it out here. You can see the couch now is well involved. The temperatures now are 977 degrees. We just passed 1,000 degrees. You'll very quickly see all of this flash over. It will be a bright, uh, should be a bright fire uh, flashing. And you can see once it actually got started just how quick that room developed and caught and, and basically was totally consumed. We're only at about a minute and 20. There's flash over right there. Temperatures of 1,500, 1,600 degrees. So the firefighters are going to knock it down. I'll tell you how quickly that cools off. Once they start introducing water, we're down to 1,200 degrees. We're down to 1,000 degrees. We're down to 900 degrees, 800 degrees, 600 degrees. So that's the impact of why we try to get firefighters in a structure as quickly as they can and get water applying because very, very quickly it can take the temperatures down. Again, the temperature in that area at the start of the test was running at about uh, 70, 70 to 80 degrees. A lot of times, uh, those of us in the fire service say that basically a sprinkler system is like having a firefighter in every room. Statistically, if you look at the fires that have occurred across the United States in sprinkler properties, uh, it's in the high 90 percentages of those fires that are handled with the sprinkler system and never require fire department intervention as it relates to spray and water. The other thing that is sometimes a myth is why sprink while smoke detectors are very good for early notification and we want you to have smoke detectors, smoke detectors do nothing for putting out a fire. Sprinkler systems help extinguish the fire. You see how quickly that activated. There was virtually very little fire in that room at all. The temperature did not get much above 100 degrees. It, and it went off in about 50 seconds from the time the fire was started burning in there. So we'll go ahead and we will shut down the flow to that sprinkler head. <clears throat> we'll, let it we'll just let it flow for a minute to make sure that the fire is out because we don't. And typically what would happen is once that activates, it would continue to flow water until the fire department's on the scene, make sure the fire is out, and then turns off the sprinkler system. If you look at the damage to the room on the right and how long it would take to recover that room versus the damage on the left and how long it would take to recover that room, you see a significant difference. You don't see near the smoke damage, virtually no smoke or heat damage in the, in the uh, fire sprinkler protected area. Certainly you have some water damage, but again, that water damage is minimal compared to what it would be if a firefighter was operating a hose line at 150 to 200 gallons per minute for any length of time.